students i am dr shikha pandey associate professor from institute of aeronautical engineering so today i will discuss about the cvs treatment so now comes to the uh, just the uh, basic introduction about the cvs treatment and what is the cvs and from where it will be uh, generated so we have discussed about uh, all the solid waste in this solid waste lecture series today we will discuss about the sea waste water waste water treatment because from waste water treatment also sludge will be generated so that sludge will, uh, is coming under the category of solid waste only so after that we will study about the treatment of this sludge so first of all we will start with the waste water treatment so what is this waste water and from where this water is coming so waste water is a polluted form of waste generated from rain water runoff and human activities or from household activities residential area household activities household activity residential area residential area so this is called as waste water or sewage and uh, waste water is polluted form of water the water which is not clean which will be having either a uh, black color black which is not transparent in color foul smell is there or some uh, suspended particulate matter is there suspended solids are there so this type of water is called as waste water dirty water or sewage it it is typically ca categorized by the manner in which it generates specifically as from sewage uh, domestic sewage industrial sewage or storm sewage or storm water so this water this waste water is also categorized in some different categories so the waste water that is generated from the residential activity is called as domestic sewage like that the water that is generated from the industry is called as industrial sewage the water that is generated by the runoff or rain water is called as storm sewage so domestic is from household activity household water industrial is industry industry and storm is rain water rain water surface runoff surface runoff so this is the basic introduction about the waste water waste water is the polluted form of water that can be either generated from the uh, industry or from any hospital or from any residential activity or from any industry or sometime from the uh, run of water also it is also called as sewage and it can be categorized by the manner in which it is generation on the basis of its generation it is categorized either in a domestic sewage industrial sewage or storm sewage comes to the next point like uh, characteristics of the waste water how can we ca categorize the waste water and what are the characteristics of the waste water so it is broadly divided into three categories first is the physical characteristics uh, chemical characteristics and some biological characteristics so when we are studying about the physical characteristics of the waste water it will be comes under the either the turbidity color of the water and odor total solid and temperature all the physical appearance of the water physical appearance means by seeing the water they they are the by seeing the water we can say that the water is polluted so it is uh, what are the characteristics what are the features first is the turbidity turbidity means this water is looking very uh, dark in color next is the color of the water odor of the water taste of the water total solid so all these characteristics can be um uh, we will get information but just by the physical appearance of the water same we will come at the chemical characteristics so it will be due to the some addition of some chemi chemical impurities so the factors which will be responsible for the chemical characteristics are the cod total organic uh, carbon toc nitrogen phosphorus Uh, chloride sulfate alkalinity ph heavy metal trace elements and some pollutants so this will be like uh, bring changes in some of the chemical impurities just like that bod biological characteristic so if it will be done due to some contaminants so for bi biological characteristics it will be like bod some amount of biological oxygen demand chemical oxygen demand oxygen uh, total oxygen required for the nitrification and microbial population 
so this is about the characteristics of the waste water first is the physical characteristic chemical characteristics and biological characteristics so on the basis of its physical appearance on the basis of its chemical nature and biological activity we can categorize the water as a waste water or clean water now comes to the next point this is about the primary treatment so how this treatment has been done so primary treatment of waste water is basically involves the sedimentation of solid waste within the water the solid waste will be there like the waste water the sedimentation sedimentation means the impurity will be there total dissolved solid will be there so that will be settled at the bottom of the chamber so this is called as sedimentation sedimentation tank will be there in the sewage treatment plant so where the waste water will enters and the total dissolved solids are there impurities are there that is going to be settled at the bottom of the tank so it is called as sedimentation as sewage enters a plant for the treatment and it flows through a screen which removes the larger floating uh, objects like the rag and sticks that might be sometime clog pipe or damage the equipment so this uh, next step is like that when the sedimentation will be there for the water then the, uh, then the uh, this water will enters to the primary treatment where the screen is there so that screen will do that screen will filter out and remove the larger some floating objects are there so it will be going to remove the larger floating objects like some rag some stick some plastic will be there because when uh, it I, if it will be enters then it it is going to be clog or dam damage the equipments next what happen after it passing through the screen it will it this uh, seaways has passed through the screen so it passes it passes into the great chamber where the cider snacks sands and small stones will be settled to the bottom so this small stone will be there and these ciders will be there they will be going to be settled at the bottom after screening is completed and grit has been removed sewage still contains some organic and inorganic matter along with other suspended solid so this is just a primary treatment and in that primary treatment only the physical appearance like the removal of uh, rags or removal of plastic or some small stone will be there that will be settled at the bone bottom of the tank and after the when the screening is completed and the grit is removed the sewage still contain organic and inorganic matters because this is impurity this is a contaminants that is present in the water so this organic and inorganic matter along with other suspended solids will again going to be clean in the uh, secondary treatment process so you can see this is the picture of a sedimentation tank so this will be involve the primary treatment unit see in influent will be coming from this side and you can see this is a screen will be there so this screen is going to filter the sewage is going to filter the sewage and it is going to remove the larger bodies and the larger uh, some uh, plastic some uh, big uh, bottles are there something will be there so this screen will remove the larger particle and then this sewage will enters to the grit chamber and from grit chamber it is uh, it again enters to the sedimentation tank so the solids it settle down here solid is settle down here this is called as sedimentation tank means the all solid particles are settled down here and then from this point the effluent will be coming like that from this place so this is a picture about the primary treatment you can see it is very clear like the uh, sewage will enters from the influent and then screen will be there and from screen grit chamber through grit chamber and then again uh, by removing the uh, larger particle it enters the grit chamber and then sedimentation tank so the small suspended uh, soils are there suspended some particulates are there they are going to settle down into the grit chamber and sedimentation tank then the effluent will be going for the secondary treatment secondary treatment so in secondary treatment uh, of the treatment it removes 85% of the organic matter in sewage by making use of the bacteria into it and the principal technique used in secondary treatment are the trickling filter and activated sludge process so trickling filter and activated sludge process are two type of principle that is involved for the primary secondary treatment 
So after the effluent leaves the sedimentation tank in the primary stage, it flows or is pumped to a facility using one or the other of these processes. So when this uh, effluent will enter to the secondary treatment, then what happens? Aeration tank will be there. So two type of method will be there that is generally followed in for our um, the, for the secondary treatment. First one is the trickling filter and activated sludge process. When the influent will enters into the aeration tank, so some aerated chamber will be there. You can see this is the aerated chamber where uh, aer aeration aeration will be done for the water with the air. So after that, what happen in the aeration chamber? Then again, the water will enters to the effluent, and the water and biosolids will be collected here. So returned activated biosolids will be there. So this is called as activated biosolid process. So in the sedimentation tank in the primary stage, it flows or it's pumped to a facility using one or the other of these processes. So when the effluent uh, leaves the sedimentation tank in the primary stage, it flows or is pumped to a facility using one or the other of these processes. The principal technique used in secondary treatment are the trickling filter and the activated sludge process. So, uh, two type of method will be there that is trickling for filter and activated sludge processes. And this stage of treatment remove mostly about 85% of the total organic matter in the sea waste by making the use of bacteria into it. Now, next come to the trickling filter. It consists of a fixed bed of rocks, coke, gravel. So, in trickling filter, what happened? You can see that it is made up of some uh, fixed bedrock like um, coke, gravel, some slag, polyurethane foams, sphagnum peat, moss, ceramic, or some plastic media. So, this is the filter. So, this filter will be made up of by these many of the material. So, over it will be trickled, the water will be trickled from here. You can see water will be trickled from here, uh, media over which seaways or other wastewater flows downward and causes a, a layer of microbial slim to grow. And this will be causing a layer of a microbial activity, this microbial slim to grow and covering the bed of the media. The treatment of seaways or other wastewater with trickling filter is among the oldest and most well characterized treatment technology. So this treatment of sea waves or other wastewater with some trickling filter is among the oldest and most well characterized treatment technology. So this trickling filter is consists of a fixed bed of rocks, some coke, gravel, slag, polyurethane foams, sphagnum peat moss, ceramic or plastic media. So over which the sea waves or other wastewater flows downward and causes a layer of microbial slim to grow and covering the bed of the media. And next what happened, this treatment of sea waves or other wastewater with trickling filter is among the oldest and most well characterized treatment technologies. Next is the activated sludge process. So uh, today it is a trendy, it is towards the use of activated sludge process instead of trickling filter. The activated sludge process speeds up the work of a bacteria by bringing air and sludge heavily laden with bacteria into close contact with the sewage. This activated sludge process will speed up the work of the bacteria by bringing air and sludge. So aeration uh, chambers are there. So in that aeration chamber, the uh, process will speed up. The activated sludge are there. They are going to speed up the work of bacteria by bringing air, by providing aeration to the chamber so by providing aeration means by adding extra air the bacteria uh, activity will be speed up and in this way in this way the sludge or heavily laden with bacteria into close contact with the sewage after the sewage leaves the settling tank in the primary stage it is pumped into a aeration tank where it is mixed with water and sludge loaded with bacteria and allow to remain for several hours so Next, what happened when this um, water will leave the aeration chamber, it enters to the settling tank in the primary stage. It is pumped into a aeration tank where it is mixed with air and sludge. It will mix with the air and sludge that will be loaded with the bacteria and allowed to remain for several hours. 
So during this time, the bacteria break down the organic matter into a harmless byproduct. During this time, the bacteria will break down the organic matter into a harmless byproducts. The this activated sludge process is trendy because of the use of activated sludge process instead of trickling fact uh, trickling filter. The it it will be providing aeration to the bacteria so that the bacteria will work uh, work will be increased or speed will be there. After the sewage leaves the septic tank in the primary stage, it is pumped into a aeration tank where it is mixed with air and sludge loaded with bacteria and allowed to remain for several hours. So during this time, the bacteria break down the organic matter into harmless byproduct. So to complete the secondary treatment, effluents from the sedimentation tank is usually disinfected. So after that, what happened? After the secondary treatment, after secondary treatment, tertiary treatment will be there. So in tertiary treatment, what we do? In tertiary treatment, what we'll do? We will use some disinfection, disinfectants, disinfectants. So this will make the uh, kill the bacteria. This is a disinfectant kill the bacteria. So to complete the secondary treatment, effluents from the sedimentation tank is usually disinfected with some chlorine. So before this, uh, when it has been discharging into the receiving water or any water tank. So for this, we are going to use the chlorine. Chlorine is fed into the water to kill the pathogenic bacteria. Chlorine is fed into the water that is going to kill the pathogenic bacteria and to reduce the odor. So it will be done properly. Chlorination will kill more than 99% of the harmful bacteria in the effluent. So mostly it will kill 99% of bacteria. For this chlorine will be added. So chlorine is going to kill 99% of the harmful bacteria in an effluent. So many states now remove requires to remove the excess chlorine before discharging to surface water by a process called dechlorination. So here one more negative point will be there. What happened when we are going to add the chlorine to the water to kill the microbial activity, to kill the microbes or to kill the bacteria. So in this way, what happened? The chlorine percentage is also increased into, into the water. So to reduce down the, uh, the percentage of chlorine into the water or to remove the excess of chlorine before the discharge to the surface water is called, uh, is called as dechlorination. So after this chlorination process, dechlorination process is also there. In dechlorinosis process, what happened? The excess of chlorine has been reduced, has been removed from this uh, this secondary wastewater means of the water. So excess of chlorine will be reduced by the dechlorination process. Next uh, is the oxidation pond. So oxidation pond or lagoon or water stabilization pond. It is again the secondary wastewater treatment process and it is going to treat the wastewater or sometimes sea waste that will be coming either from the industries or from the residential area. It is generally uses some microorganisms like bacteria, algae and light energy to stabilize the wastewater and the oxidation pond is constructed 1 to 1.5 meter deep inside the soil and provided with the inlet and outlet system. So you can see this is a picture of oxygen pond. So in this oxygen pond, what happened? Wastewater inlet will be there and reclaimed water outlet will be there. So uh, you can see that due to the sunlight, microorganism and like bacteria and, and some algae and some light energy, they are going to stabilize the wastewater. And uh, they are going to stabilize the wastewater and th then what happened, you can see that due to the oxygen will be there, sunlight will be there. So by the sunlight, the algal biomass and the activity will be started. And in this way, they are going to be uh, stabilized. So oxidation process has been taken and in this way what happened, the uh, solids will be settled and in the form of sludge and it is going to be settled at the bottom. In uh, Like that in case of uh, algae, algae will become dead cell, then bacteria will decompose the algae and then this dead cell will be settled down at the bottom of the pond. And then again what happened, uh, these gases will be released, carbon dioxide, methane, H2S and, and, and ammonia. And this, you can see that again, these three uh, steps will be there. First is the aerobic zone, 
facultative zone and anaerobic zone so aerobic zone is in the presence of oxygen in facultative zone it will be decomposed and anaerobic is like absence of oxygen absence of oxygen so here you can see that three uh, three zones are there aerobic facultative and anaerobic in this way the sunlight will be coming on the oxidation pond and this is going to be a uh, reaction will be happen and due to this reaction all these uh, microbes all the bacteria will be killed and and it will be settled in the form of organic matter and organic acid at the bottom of the tank so next is the tertiary treatment next step is the tertiary treatment so new problem nowadays new pollution problem they has placed additional burden on the waste water treatment system so today some pollutants like heavy metal chemical compounds and toxic substances they are more difficult to remove from the water so rising the demand on the water supply and only aggravate aggregate the problem the increasing needs to reuse water calls for better waste water treatment to return more usable water to receiving lakes and stream new method of removing pollutants are being developed so uh, tertiary treatment will be now much needed as for the demand of today's world because nowadays pollution level has been increased because of some heavy metals some chemical compounds toxic substances so these are very tough to remove either by the secondary treatments that's why the tertiary treatment will be required so to return more usable water to receiving lakes and stream some new method has been developed for the removal of pollutants from the water so new pollution problem has been arises and it has been placed additional burden on the waste water treatment system and today's pollutants like heavy metals chemical oxides chemical compounds toxic substances they are more di more difficult to remove from the water and rising demand on the water supply only aggravate the problems the increasing need to reuse the water calls for better waste water treatment and it will be like that to return more usable water to receiving lakes and stream new methods for removing pollutant are being developed so in tertiary treatment you can see these are some of the method will be there first one is the uh, chemical coagulation and filtration adsorption technique chemical oxidation des desalination and oxidation ponds will be there so these are involved these are the some methods that has been adopted for the tertiary treatment like chemical coagulation and filtration method adsorption chemical oxidation desalination and oxidation ponds so first of all we'll discuss about the chemical coagulation so chemical coagulation will be like a coagulant has been added in the chemical waste water process which is used to remove solids from the water by manipulating electrostatic charges of particles suspended in the water so this process introduces small high charged molecule into the water to destabilize the charge on the particles colloids or oily material in the suspension you can see that water is like that so some negative charges has been added so after adding the coagulant into the waste water the um, all the settled uh, molecules will be settled down at the bottom of the tank so this coagulant is the chemical water treatment that is used to remove the solids from the water by manipulating the electrostatic charge so due to the electrostatic charge all has been settled down at the chamber and the, then again what happen highly charged molecule into the water will destabilize stabilize the charges on the particles or sometimes colloid or oily material in the suspension selecting the right coagulants from uh, for a system will enhance overall system performance and particularly improve solids removal efficiency by enhancing filters and clarifier performance so chemical coagulation and filtration so selecting the right coagulants for a system it will be going to enhance overall system performance and particularly improve the solids removal efficiency by enhancing filters and clarifier performance particles in the water carries an electrostatic charge on the surface particles which is present in the water is going to carry a electrostatic charge on their surface common example includes like clay silica iron paints clay silica iron paints and even sometimes oil also 
these small suspended particles are stabilized in suspension and difficult to remove via some mechanical methods so particles in the water is basically carry the electrostatic charges on their surface and like it will be include some clay silica iron paints and even some oil also these small suspended particles will stabilize in suspension and difficult to remove by the mechanical reactions so a suspension of solid in water typically contain a variety of particle size so suspension is there in the solids or in water it is going to be contains a variety of particle size adsorption process will be there so adsorption is a waste water purification techniques for removing a wide range of compounds from the industrial waste water adsorption will basically involved a waste water purification techniques so that will be helpful in removing a wide range of compounds from the industrial waste water adsorption is most commonly implemented for the removal or low concentration of non degradable organic compounds from ground water drinking water preparation process water or as tertiary cleansing after for example the biological water purification active carbon is by far the most commonly used adsorbent so active carbon activated carbon activated carbon is mostly activated carbon is mostly used and adsorbent will be there next is the chemical oxidation chemical oxidation is an in situ remediation techni technology that can be applied to the ground water or soils and many different contaminants so this chemical oxidation will be there and it is a in situ remediation technique so it is a, then what happen it is a chemical technology where the uh, strong oxidants are injected or mechanically mixed with the into the treatment zone to promote the destructive abiotic degradation reaction so uh, it is kind of chemical technology where what happen strong oxidants are there so this a uh, strong oxidant is injected or mechanically mixed with the treatment zone to promote the destructive abiotic degradation reaction and oxidation is a driving force for many water and waste water treatment solution oxidation is the driving force for many water and waste water treatment solution ozone interacts with hydrogen containing compounds and decomposes in a series of steps to reduce it oh radical is in an alkaline solution uh, so uh, ozone is also involved and ozone is basically interact with the hydrogen compound containing compounds and decomposes in a series of steps by reducing to the oh radicals in an alkaline solution so desalination pond and oxidation pond desalination is a process in that we will remove the excess salt and other minerals from the water treated uh, fresh water will be there which is having a low concentration of salts and mineral concentrate or brine will be there which has salts and mineral concentration higher than that of a feed water so the treated fresh, wa uh, fresh water that is having low concentration of salts and mineral concentrate or brine this is having uh, salts and mineral concentration higher than that of a feed water so next what happen oxidation pond will be there so in oxidation pond this will be like shallow pond will be there that has been designed to uh, to treat the waste water through the interaction of sunlight bacteria and algae by the process of oxidation so by oxidation what happen algae is there which is growing using energy from the sun and carbon dioxide algae will grow that is using energy from the sun and carbon dioxide and inorganic compounds released by the bacteria in the water algae is growing by using energy from the sun and carbon dioxide and inorganic compounds will release by bacteria in the water next tertiary treatment is what happened there is a growing need of advanced procedure that will provide a product capable of being reused for various purposes so the recycled waste water can be used for irrigation mainly for non food crops like grassland lawn playground etc the renovation of waste water to a quality that would going to permit its reuse for a variety of purposes is a major objectives of the current research in this field so the tri tertiary treatment is now the growing need for advanced procedure that will provide a product which is capable of being re 
reused for various purposes. The recycled wastewater can be used for irrigation, mainly for non-food crops like grassland, lawn, playground, etc. The renovation of wastewater to a quality that would permit its use for a variety of purposes is a major objective of current research in this field. So these are the references of some of the references of the textbook that I have used for this study. You can, if you want to depth to study of the subject, you can go, you can study from this textbook. So now I'm concluding my lecture. In this lecture, I have discussed about the CVS, what is CVS water and what are the primary, secondary, tertiary treatment methods for the, for the treatment of wastewater. And uh, due to now, uh, due, today's world, due to more pollution, due to the introduction of heavy metals, many types of metals, this is much required. Tertiary treatment, more advanced methods has been much required. So, if you have any query, if you have any question regarding this lecture, you can write in the comment box or you can mail me to my mail id thank you for today's lecture like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates